right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Today, I'm going over some practical information on programming. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos on energy systems. We talk about energy systems a lot at Garage Gym Athlete, and I want to make sure that people understand it. Uh, but I want to go over what I'm going to do and not going to do. So today is going to be a practical explanation of using energy systems, because when I hear or the other content created around energy systems, um, it's very like in the weeds, sciencey, and let's be real, completely useless for either an athlete looking to implement this or a coach looking to implement it for their athletes. And so, if you want a bioenergetics lesson that talks about how the aerobic energy system or the aerobic or oxidative pathway primarily uses fat oxidation as its fuel substrate go to a different video. You know, you can go look all those things up, but again, they're not actually going to help you. And so I can touch on some of those things, but really this is the practical application of energy system programming. So today I am going to be talking about one energy system specifically. There are three. Uh, We have creatine phosphate, we have glycolytic, and we have oxidative. I'm going to start with oxidative in this uh, video today. So the oxidative or aerobic pathway is what I'm going to be covering. All right, so let's talk about it. And again, practical application. So what is this uh, pathway in using it? Well, it's about 20 to 35% of max power. So if you think about in uh, the aerobic pathway, if you were to be running and 100 meters as fast as you could go was 100% of your max power, then aerobic would support let's say 20 to 35% of that. And that, you know, it's no, um, it's no mystery that aerobic is going to be a little bit slower running. You can do th- some threshold stuff, but we're talking about a mile, two miles, anything greater than three minutes, which is going to bring me to my next point. Where does this oxidative pathway start to kick in? Well, it's well accepted that anything greater than three minutes is going to use your aerobic system or your oxidative pathway. So if you want to build your aerobic base, we're looking at training that's greater than three minutes. Now, three minutes is kind of the minimum here for aerobic. And another thing to note, all three energy systems are working at all times. They're just um, operating in different uh, percentages. So if you were to be running, you know, five miles, yes, that's oxidative aerobic, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's 100% aerobic. There might still be some of the other energy systems slightly working there. Um, so you're looking to go greater than three minutes, 20 to 35% of max power, And now a a commonly accepted uh, way to program uh, different energy systems is knowing the work to rest ratios. And they're very different for each energy system. So aerobic specifically is typically a one to one work to rest or one to three work to rest. So that means if I were to be hitting three minutes on, three minutes off or three minutes on six minutes off. And it kind of depends on your intensity of that aerobic work, but those are the basics of the oxidative system. So now let's talk about actually programming it. So if we were to program this and let's just stick with this low end. So I don't want to go up to 10 minutes. Let's just stick with three minutes. I'm doing three minute intervals. Uh, Well, I'm going to be doing a three minutes on three minutes off. Okay, so that's the basics, and that's sticking within that one-to-one work-to-rest ratio. Now, the next two things that you really need to know when you are programming energy systems are how many pieces and how many blocks. And because pieces and blocks are what's actually going to make the energy system effective in, in training it. So if I want to go to my garage or to the gym and train the aerobic energy system, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do three minutes on, three minutes off. Well, how many times should you do that? What are what are some common, you know, uh, amounts or volume should I do? Like we, it's a lot easier to calculate volume when we're talking about strength training. We can we can add those up. They're commonly accepted principles, but that's not as much the case in energy system training. It's out there, but you really need a lot of practical application. So for us, what we found is you're going to want to do something like this: three minutes on, three minutes off. You're going to want three to four pieces. So that means three to four pieces would be, let's just say three specifically here. You do three minutes on, three minutes off. So that's six minutes worth of, uh, you know, work and rest there. You would do that three times. Okay. So three times that's, uh, 
18 minutes, right? So that's 18 minutes worth of training already. So that's how many pieces you would have. Then you would have blocks from there. So you would be looking to train this amount, two to three, three blocks. So that means you would do those three to four pieces two to three separate times. So if it was 18 minutes, you're going to rest in between blocks and that's typically gonna be full rest. So like it could be five to 10 minutes rest between blocks. And so how this looks now, three minutes on, three minutes off, three minutes on, three minutes off, three minutes on, three minutes off. That's 18 minutes of you've done three pieces. That's one block. Now you would take a, let's say 10 minute rest period and then you would do it again. And then you take another 10 minute rest period and you do it again. So it depends on how much time you actually have. But if you're looking at, that's two 18 minute pieces. So we're at 36 uh, minutes already. And then you add 10 minutes, you're at 46 minutes. You're at an almost, you're getting closer to an hour long training session there because there's so much rest involved. And that's the one thing that you have to know about energy systems. The work to rest ratios are very, very important. You, you have to do the rest. And we'll get into this when we're getting into glycolytic and we're getting into the creatine phosphate zone. Uh, but the, sometimes you feel like you're resting way too much, but you need a near 100% recovery. And that's why you need these greater work to rest ratios. Now these pieces and blocks change on the amount of time. So if I were to do a 20 minute run, let's just go over here. If I did a 20 minute run, well, I might need, let's just say one piece of that, but two blocks. And you can look at it as pieces as well. So it does change from duration. So 20 minute, um, what I would probably do here is you could do 20 minutes on 20 minutes off 20 minutes on. So that would be a full 60 minute workout. So 20 on 20 off 20 on. And so that would be, uh, you know, that'd be an hour long. That's how much, uh, training time most people have, but that's what you're looking at. And, and you'd be training to that specific zone. So if you, if it's a 60 minute run, it'd obviously be a lot less. And sometimes that's all you need, but if you're trying to build up a big aerobic base, you're going to need a lot more of this. Now, what we haven't covered yet, and we will in future videos is getting into specific heart rate training zones and the benefits of those, because if you were to be looking at, you know, um, like shorter end stuff. So we did three minutes on three minutes off. You can still do like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. It still holds that one to one work to rest ratio, but, but then you might be, well, it's only 30 seconds. Yeah, but it's, you're not getting enough time to recover. So on a 30, 30, um, you need multiple pieces. And what you start to do is start to train the aerobic system with something like a 30, 30, um, because you're not allowing for enough rest. And, and that's what I think I want to throw in there as like a misconception to energy system training is just because you, if you're only doing something for 20 to 30 seconds, that doesn't mean you're training a lower energy uh, system. And the same, if you were to run all out for 10 minutes, if you're running as fast as you can, and then you just slamming into a wall. So give you an example of a 10 minute all out run, right? So say you're running a five minute mile for the two, first two minutes of that. You're running an eight minute mile for the next two minutes. You're running a 15 minute mile for the next two minutes. You're just getting slower and slower. You're not really training a predominant energy system. What you have trained is a little bit of each one that's end up just going to be the aerobic because you're going to run out of so much power and energy systems that you're just going to be training the aerobic zone. So that I know that's a lot of information, a lot to unpack, but the things you know with energy system, oxidative aerobic, you're looking for 20 to 35% of max power, greater than three minutes in duration. Make sure you're keeping a one-to-one -one work to rest or one to three work to rest. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're programming the appropriate amount of pieces and blocks, and then the rest between the blocks before you hit more pieces. So that is energy systems oxidative. Uh, a lot more to dive into. We'll tease this one out more. And then in upcoming videos, we'll also do the glycolytic energy system and the creatine phosphate energy system. All right, guys, that's it for this one. If you are on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel as we have more stuff coming out. Give us a like and a comment so we know how you like the content. And if you are listening to this on your favorite podcast player, the best thing that you could do for the show is leave a five-star review and a positive comment. It really does help the show out. Uh, and we want to get as our information out to as many people as we can. So if you could leave that review, we'd really appreciate it. But that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching or listening.
for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.